this leads to this question of what affects epigenetics in, in, uh, uh, in life. Uh, what things other than uh, exposures uh, in the fetus? And this is a, a very interesting area of research right now. One of the things that we have discovered, one of my personal research area, is the fact that epigenetics change with age. As we age, we actually acquire a number of epigenetic abnormalities and that a 60-year-old cell is actually quite different from a newborn cell from an epigenetic point of view. Um, this, I believe, is an intrinsic phenomenon to aging, but that is potentially bad. That is why uh, we get more diseases as we age, cancers, but perhaps other diseases as well, which have an epigenetic component are more common in older people because there has been a lifelong accumulation of epigenetic damage. Now, are there things that could increase this damage or decrease these damage that we do, and most definitely there are. For example, any injury, any chronic inflammation will lead to more epigenetic damage. So people who smoke have more epigenetic damage because there's chronic injury. And uh, on the other hand, perhaps anti-inflammatory drugs m over a long time might protect from epigenetic damage, and that might be why aspirin is a you know, good drug to take as a cancer chemopreventive agent in some cases. Um, there is some emerging evidence that diet might influence it. For example, um, there is some recent data that people who take a lot of folate have more epigenetic damage than people who uh, take normal levels of folate. This is particularly worrisome in the US because the FDA is supplementing our food with folate to prevent neural tube defects in children. However, this might over the long run have deleterious consequences if people take extra folate. And indeed, there are now randomized studies that show that in some instances, taking too much folate is actually bad for you. There was a couple of studies that showed an increased rate of cancer associated with uh, high levels of folate. Uh, this should serve as a reminder to everyone that vitamins can have bad effects. They are not always um, good for you. Uh, we're only beginning to study what in lifestyle and in diet can affect epigenetics. I want to stress that these are not huge changes. They take very long periods of time to occur. So, um, you know, if you, if you have an inflammation today, your epigenetics aren't going to change tomorrow. If you take a vitamin pill today, your epigenetic changes aren't going to change tomorrow. These are processes that take decades to, uh, 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 that take decades to happen. Similarly, if we want to intervene, we need to intervene over a long period of time to see these effects, to prevent these effects or reduce these effects.